Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! been wound up a little bit by some of the things you say. I'm not a terribly uh, Boris fan. Have I said anything uh, wrong, do you think? No, no, you're entitled to your view. No, 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 this is, I haven't expressed a view. I've just listed... Oh, yes, you have. Yeah, what, you're very one-sided, very, very partisan. So what have I, I said mean, that Boris say, Johnson hasn't done? What have I yeah, said? Well, you say you haven't expressed a view. I mean, your, your approach is to try and persuade us that here's a man who should be unelectable for a party you don't support. Oh, no. I think, I think the Telegraph have got it right today, or the Times. That, that, no, it's Matthew Dancona writing today, for, former editor of the Sunday Telegraph, saying that Boris Johnson taking over leadership of the Conservative Party would be the best possible outcome for Jeremy Corbyn. But that's, that's, that's the next well, chapter. Then, then hang on a minute. That's, given that... your political persuasion, you should be in favour of his election, then. No, I don't like Jeremy Corbyn either, Greg. You see, this is the problem when you think that you're addressing my opinions, which I haven't offered up yet. So what have I said about mm. Boris Johnson this morning that isn't true? Has he, has he cheated on all of his wives? Well, listen, you don't have to go through it all again. I'm not questioning whether or not you've made statements of fact. So, well, I am, as, have as, I? As opposed to opinion. No, I, ju I just think you're... But have I said it. anything that's not true? Well, I didn't ring up to say that you had. Why, why do you ask me that question? Because you said that did somehow up, I've said something that's to, unfair. Did I, ring up to, did I ring up to accuse you of being a liar? I didn't. So, so, so everything I've said is true? Well, let, let's start from the standpoint that it is. <laughs> it isn't the reason I rang. The reason okay, I rang so is what's wound you up then, Greg? What's wound me up is it's so nakedly apparent that your real approach here is not your moral outrage. So what have I said that's party. not true? But, well, I didn't ring up to accuse and, you of and, saying and something this is, not true. And this is why you're my perfect caller, because I've said lots of things about Boris Johnson that are true, and you are doing what I think is proverbially known as getting wound up by the messenger. So, so why is it his actions that I get upset about, but what I, you get upset about is me telling you what his actions are? Is that, is that what no, it feels no, like? I get wound up. I get wound up by the sham of your pretense and moral outrage when what you really want to do is to persuade me that, that the election of Boris would be bad, whereas in reality, like so many other people, you know, the, 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 the Tories are looking forward to, many Tories are looking forward to Boris being leader because he's the whole electable. Point, that's the whole point of he's this phone. Yes, exactly. That's Don't the you whole... understand? He's electable. <laughs> Yes, you I, know the history. You know the history great. of Winston this is, Churchill. This don't is you? what I keep saying. He is electable, but he's also yeah. a, a serial liar, an adulterer. He's lost forty million quid's worth of public money for the for the Garden well, Bridge keep, we've heard all in this. London. He's had children. Well, because I want to know how uh, that we, we tallies with traditional conservatism. Uh, we, you're not you're not a traditional conservative. Why are you defending them? <sighs> oh, Greg, I'll try you again. Started, you have I'll started try, off. I'll try again. What is, it. what is it about Boris Johnson that encourages and allows people like you to turn off your moral compass and not care about all oh, of the lies? Oh, who's turned off you? Whoa, that's a nasty accusation. I've turned off my moral compass. Where do you get that from? Well, do you care about family values? Do you care about honesty? Do you care about integrity? Do you care about economic competence? Do you care about marriage? Do you care about fidelity? Do you care about... I mean, yeah. all of these things. I, I, oh, usually, yeah. conservatives do. That's all I'm saying, mate. I'm uh, sorry did, if I'm. Did I'm sorry if I'm misrepresenting you. Did I say I'm a conservative? I never said I was. Well, what are you getting wound up by then? Uh, because it's your attempt, like so many other people, to discredit B Boris. No, you see, I'm just listing yes, things is, he's done, yes. Greg. I'm just listing things he's done, and and I, I wish we could get a little bit further into your own personal psychology, but you seem a little bit obsessed by mine. I don't have a view on this. I've said myself that I have voted for Boris Johnson in the past, and I fell for it. And I guess if I was still falling for it, then I'd be keen to shoot the messenger as well. But how can conservatives turn off the concern that they supposedly and historically have for all of the things that Boris Johnson is the antithesis of. Economic competence, honesty, integrity, fidelity, family values, ethics, decency, uh, and consistency. That's the bit I don't get. And I think Greg's right, for the record. I think, I think the answer is it doesn't matter, James. He, he, he can win as an election. But that's quite ugly, isn't it? In a moral context? Steve is in Manchester. Steve, what would you like to say? How are you, James? You okay? I'm grand, mate. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. What I'd like to say is I, I, I value the argument, but it, none of it really matters because... I, I think you're right. This, 
At this stage, all we need, as you've already said, is somebody that can keep Labour out. The thought of Labour getting in, for me, in the job that I do is scary. What do you do? Absolutely scary. I'm a head teacher. Mm. Um, I'm off work at the moment, just recovering from an operation. But the thought of Labour getting in for me is a scary, scary thought. To be Probably in a minority in your profession. Well, I am actually. Yes. You know, it is a left, left winging, uh, left uh, leaning. Uh, so, what profession. is it you fear most about a Labour well, government? Well, do you know what people say? It's all about Corbyn, and it is about beating Corbyn because he's got he's got you know a popular a popular vote. But his front bench is horrific. Absolutely horrific front bench. I mean, I could go through them, but I won't. I won't bore you. Well, pick your favourite. Pick your favourite. The least favourite or favourite. I haven't got Le a favourite. Least favourite. Well, let's go with the um, the Shadow Secretary for Education, Angela Rayner. Yes. Um, she didn't get any qualifications at school. She openly admits that. How can she lead A levels and GCSEs in this country? How does how does that work, James? Could you explain that to me? I, I don't. Then, I, no, I could have a go. Well. Do you think she's going to be taken seriously? I'm, pre I'm pretty sure Gavin Williamson was never in the army. No, I, I, I get that, but that's that's slightly different. My, my, Michael, Gove, Michael Gove's teacher? not an environmentalist. No, and not at all, but all of that, don't you think it might help? Would you want your children being led by somebody that didn't uh, take any A-levels or GCSEs? Uh, hand on heart, mate, I wouldn't give a hoot. I'd look at what they were proposing, what their policies looked like, and, and how they how they presented and performed them in public. I, I wouldn't... Yeah, I, in the I same way, you've got to have some credibility in this profession. Well, that, know, that's, that's where I would look for credibility. I mean, this is a bit of a red herring. I didn't know that she had no... I mean, in a way, to, to achieve... You could, I mean, I would have thought that was a conservative story. You, you left school at 15 with no qualifications and ended up Secretary of State for Education. In, in, in a slightly different way, if you squinted a bit, you could hold that up as an example of how productive and, and, and progressive our country was, couldn't you? <laughs> if, you if you squinted. Well, I, 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 mean, well, I meant you squinted, because I'm, I'm saying if it was the other way round, if, if it was a... What, what were Estimate Vey's A-levels? Probably very decent. I, don't, I have no idea. Well, don't you need to know if you're going to make such a big deal out of Angela Rayner's? Well, who, who is the, the Secretary that, of State for Education know, at the moment? The, the, fact, the, fact, that I, the fact that I know... Who, <laughs> who is the Secretary of State for Education at the moment? God knows. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a head teacher? <laughs> Absolutely. Claiming that, claiming that the qualifications of the Shadow Secretary of State for Education are really, really important while not knowing who the actual Secretary of State for Education is. Uh, you got me, James. You I didn't get you, Steve. You got yourself. <laughs> I never get anyone. Yeah, but... Enough, I hold up a mirror enough. and then I hand you a revolver. And sometimes yeah, people choose enough. to blow their own brains out like you just did. Fantastic. So, well back done. to Boris Johnson then. Yeah. Well, Boris what conservative value be... does he most represent? Do you know, I find, it, I find it quite interesting really with Boris because <laughs> he... So he do I. That's why I'm asking Corbyn. the same question yeah, again and again and again and again. What conservative value does he most embody, represent or uphold? Well, I quite like I quite like the idea of him of, of being able to get paid a fair amount of money for a fair a fair day's work. Whereas if if Labour come in, I lose half half of my wages, don't I? As a teacher, yeah. How much you do you earn? Over a certain amount of money. Well, when you wait, if you if you're above a certain amount, how you much a, do you earn? A certain amount, eighty. Eighty grand, and under Labour, you'd have to pay a greater tax on the bit above. I thought eighty was yeah, the cut-off so point. No, it's for Edison over 45. That's as it stands in. now, but I thought Labour's yeah. new policy was going to introduce a new tax rate above £80,000. And then they'd use the money to fund schools. That, that, that was the argument they would make if they were here, Steve. I hope your pupils aren't allowed to hang up. <laughs> when they make fools of themselves in public. It's 11.16. Squeeze in Liz in Stansted. I've only got about 90 seconds left, Liz. What would you like to say? Oh, hi. Um, I just think it's a breath of fresh air. I think after the last month and month of being bored with just Brexit and nobody's even bothering to talk about it anymore, suddenly Boris Johnson's on the horizon and everybody's going, oh, oh Boris, Boris, let's see what he's got to say. And, well, the, the Conservative you know, membership are, but the question was, what, what, what Conservative value do you think he best represents? Well, I think he has values as far as his upbringing is concerned. It's sort of innate within him because on, of what? how he grew up. What? I mean, he went to private school. He's got a very educated father. Yeah, but that, mother, that, that's not values. Him. That's just a CV. Well, in terms of in terms of moral or political principles, which ones do you think he most obviously represents? Um, moral values, I don't know. I mean, the, you know, life has changed, hasn't it? Everybody's getting divorced. People have affairs, whether they're from you know inner cities or 
rural yes, but, 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 but the conservative family values is still a thing among the membership. So I, I agree with you in broader society. That's why I'm so interested in traditional conservatives. So let's, let's yeah. park his personal life then and, and the, 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 the love okay. child and the terminations and what have you. I, I think most yeah. conservative members would be a little reluctant to join you in saying that that's all fine and everyone should do it. What about his politics? Which, what, what, what would you point to first as evidence of his conservatism in, in his political career? Okay, I think his politics have been overshadowed by the media. Well, let's undershadow them then. So what, what's your favourite of his political principles that embodies conservatism? Well, to be fair, I don't actually know 100% what oh, he Just give me 1% feels. then. I don't know. Because I think my So you've got no idea been... what he stands for, but <laughs> you like him. Um, I don't think he's been allowed to actually voice what he stands so for. He was mayor of London for eight years. Yeah. And well, foreign secretary, and he has a column in the Daily Telegraph for which he's paid a quarter of a million pounds a year. But you don't yeah. think he's had an opportunity to tell you what he stands for? I think every opportunity he's been given, he has been bombarded with absolute, you know, that the media. Taking let's just run every through. Let's run through made. that again. The Evening Standard, which slavishly yeah. supported his mayoralty, is pretty much the only newspaper confined to London with a with a proper news desk. He was okay. mayor of London for eight years with a communications yeah. department and an almost untrammeled access to the British media. He is paid a quarter of a million pounds a year to write a column in the Daily Telegraph, and he used to be the editor of the Spectator. But you feel that in the course of his political career, he's somehow been denied a platform. I think he's had his platform, but I think things that he said have actually been overshadowed by them making him, you know, in Well, that's why I asked you. That, that, that's why and I that's asked my you to. Point yes, as well. exactly. That's why I asked you to give me an example of something that he said that is admirable and has perhaps not been properly recognised by the mm. public at large. So, what's your favourite Boris Johnson principle or or, or policy? Um, I like a lot of your callers, and I think a lot of people out there, they don't know him well enough. I don't but you, rang in, to, to you rang in to defend him, so you must have something that you can say. The reason why I like him in terms of his politics and his principles is this. Right. The reason why I like him... In terms exactly, of his politics and his principles is... Um, I don't think that has actually... I don't think I have anything to say on that. Not one to be thing. Fair, I don't think Not I'm, one thing. He's been in Parliament for 20 odd years. He was Mayor of London for eight years. He's got a column in the Daily Telegraph. He used to edit The Spectator. He's got a season yeah, ticket yeah, on yeah, television. Yeah. He couldn't have had more opportunity <laughs> yeah. or more platform to tell you what he believes, what he stands for, what he represents. And your favourite bit, as someone who's rung a national radio station to defend him, your favourite bit of what Boris Johnson stands for is. I think he's actually a bit of got a bit of personality and he right. will be able to, if he's supported well enough within the Conservative Party, has the right people behind him, the right I am, I am going to ask you again, what on, the thing that he stands for that you most admire is... I don't actually know a politician that I admire. No, we're only talking speaker. about him. We're, we're only know, talking about him. I what know, does he stand I for? I know. I don't know. It's just so confusing and it's it so really isn't. It really isn't. It's really simple. He stands for nothing. The only thing that's confusing is why you can see that, you can have it pointed out to you, and you can still somehow see something that isn't there. It's almost as if he could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and not lose your vote list. About, thank goodness. About time. I stood up at the Welsh Conservative Conference and asked her why she hadn't resigned. Oh, and, I remember uh, that. Uh, there were people there that I'd been talking to prior to me doing that, and they were filled with fury. Uh, what about... What about about the fact that uh, she hadn't taken us out? How could, she, how could she have done that? How could she have done that? Quite simple. Go on. WTO, that's it. Bye. Let's go. Right, I see. So, so w there was never any reality in your mind uh, when we were conducting the referendum campaign and talking about negotiating agreements and negotiating deals. That that w w what was that not true or was that just theatre or? We, we, we negotiated, and as we've seen on that uh, television program, they were taking the mick out of us all the time. Well, uh, I know the television program you refer to, but were, that, that was filmed long after. They they were laughing well, at the were, incompetence of our of our well, team the because they kept saying whatever. Well, know. no, it's not. It's not whatever. This is really important. The, the, the thing that they found impossible to believe was that Theresa May was turning up in Brussels asking for things that they'd made perfectly clear that were never going to be on the table. So once you admit that, then all of the referendum campaign gets filed under either mistaken or dishonest. And the only way you can cling to the notion that leaving is a good idea is by saying that we leave on 
WTO terms. And, and on WTO terms. So, so which well, country you, at the moment do you do you see as as, as the guiding light? Because many of us are slightly unnerved by the idea of WTO terms. So what's the country doing what you think she should have done to Britain? I, okay, as far as I can uh, make out, we already deal on lots of countries on WTO terms. And it's nothing new. So, so uh, which WTO, is the country WTO, that... Well, would it, let me would, finish. No, I, 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 mean, I can't you, let you finish because you, you, you've do, misunderstood my question. What, what country currently has no free trade agreements with anybody else in the world? But that's what you want for Britain? Yeah, yes I do. Uh, so what, what are you looking at as the, as the example that you're keen to follow? Well, all you're doing is, is doing what a, a lot of the media do, which is, is keep on interrupting me and interrupting me and interrupting no, me. No, I'm not. I'm asking you questions. I, yes, exactly. So what country currently trades internationally in the way that you want the I've United Kingdom? I've already answered that question. Next. So what was your answer? Um, I don't know. Not off the top of my head. I, I, I mean... Okay, so your grounds for wanting to be like that... Let's pretend there is a country in that situation. Your grounds for wanting to be like them are what, Stuart? Listen, I all am. we want to do is people like me, all we want to do is stop being told what to do... No, 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 I, I, I understand that, no, no, and no, no, I, no, I appreciate you think I'm interrupting you again, but... Sure, I know. But, but, but the question I, is I really simple. Doing stuff like this. The question, let me, let no, me have my say. Of course I will, you carry yeah, on. Yeah, well, okay. All I'm saying is people like me are fed up with people in the EU telling us what to do. I used to be a county councillor, you know, in, in Denbyshire, yes. and I, I was involved in so-called European money, and all it was is a slush fund that... Uh, we give money to them, they take 10% off, they give, it, give some to the Welsh uh, European Funding Office, which take another 10% off, then they give some to the county council, which take another 10% off, and at the bottom line, uh, we've got a little bit left to hand out as, as some sweeties to, to the general public. That's how it, how it works. And I, I Do you have an people... example of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. Called, it was called Cantata. Go on. The county council had 1.5 million given to it by, in inverted commas, uh, the European Union, but it wasn't given to it. The, the UK gave money to the European Union, they take their bit off, they hand it out to us like sweeties. But it's, it's not... It's, it's, no, no, let me finish. I have... Let, I've, I mean, I'm just okay. asking you okay. to clarify. I've got no beef with anything that you've just said. Right, but, OK. But now but we'll then, go back to the question I asked you, if we can. This, then, okay. this notional so country then? with no trade agreements that you think we should be like... Well, no, you see, you're doing it again. What, what am I doing? You OK, no, example. you're right. You I'll finish give, your give, story. You carry yeah, on. OK, thank you. So, that money, we give, we give the money to Europe, comes back to the Welsh uh, European Funding Office, they take some off for their... Uh, uh, sorry, Europe takes 10% off, then the Welsh Funding Office takes 10% off, then Denbyshire County Council have it. We've got a load of offices uh, being employed to distribute this money, and at the end of it, we get some sweeties at the end. Yes, I, I, did, I heard you the and first time. I was involved time. in that. Okay, Do you I, know what? We I, went to Ireland. I'm no clearer on what you think you're saying, Stuart. I appreciate you think that I'm yeah. interrupting you now, but, but I, I'm just trying to get a little bit of clarity Good. on... The, the, the thing you think Theresa May should have done, she should have taken us straight out with no deal and no agreement. You can't think of a country in that situation currently, and I, I completely respect that. I apologise for interrupting you and, and asking if you did know any okay. countries in that situation. But your grounds for thinking that we will be better off as a nation or a population is based upon a theoretical country that has no trade agreements with anyone else in the world. I just want you to give me a little bit more detail okay, on where okay. you, hang on, on where you derive your confidence that that will be preferable to the situation we're currently in with a supplementary question about why, if it's so attractive, is there not a single country on the planet that's elected to do that? Okay. Go back to what I said. No, no, okay. no, please. I want you to say something new now. Right, all right. I'll say something new. Good. Theresa May, I agree. Go out there. Let's have a deal. So you talk, you sit down, you talk no, to... No, no. WTO terms means that there's no deal. So, again, I can't me, do this me, all day. I have to just ask you again. Okay. Have let you me, thought of a country yet that has no trade... You question. I'm trying to tell... Trying to no, you're not. You're not answer. answering my questions, Stuart. I am I'm, I'm sorry that I haven't been clear enough. I'll try again. The country that has no trade agreements that you can't think of, which is fine because it's a high-pressured situation when, when, when you ring a radio station, let's pretend there is one, which there isn't. Where do you derive your confidence that that country's trading arrangements are superior to what we currently have? If Theresa May had gone in there negotiating properly, yes. she, she, we could have used, the, 
uh, the argument that we will go out on WTA, and if she'd been a bit more forceful, well, we're letting Ollie Robbins do what he did, and, and we know that that's true because that... Be, that uh, wait, wait, that's not what I asked today. you, Stuart, at all. Oh, I, I well, do apologise, okay. just for the final time, the country that is, if you like, the exemplar that you wish to follow, you, you think we should have gone no, out... No, 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 no. Because what you've said in the space of... No, okay, what you've said in the space of this conversation, Stuart, on the one hand, you've said we should definitely have left on WTO terms, and then you said in the same breath that we should have threatened to leave on WTO terms, and that would have made them do our bidding. Do you see okay. why they can't both be it. true? You finally understood what I said. Oh, good. So we should definitely have left on WTO terms, but we should also have threatened to do it to get them we to give us an agreement. properly. Yes, OK. No, I'm glad we got some, some clarity in the end, I, I, and I'm glad we agree. She should have left on WTO terms, and she also shouldn't have left on WTO terms, but should have threatened to do so. And before you go, Stuart, have you thought of a country yet that has no trading agreements with anyone else in the world? Have you? Yes, there do aren't you know? any. Really? Yes. Oh, I can't right, believe you okay. didn't know so that. You're on the record of saying there I, are I, no... I, couldn't, I can't believe you didn't know that when you stood up at the Conservative Party conference and called for us to be like that. Well, at least I did something, didn't I? Yes, you, you made an absolute cretin of yourself in public for the first time. And, and now, congratulations, you've done it again.